Hello, welcome to OCR Biology uh, presentation two. This is going to be about slide preparation and drawing skills, staining, some of the skills you'll need to understand. Uh, as you can see from the uh, spec here, uh, we're going to be looking at the preparation and examination of microscope slides, the use of staining in light microscopy. We're going to touch on how um, things are also used, done in electron microscopy, and how uh, cell structure is represented using drawings so that you can practice that skill in lessons. So uh, let's consider the first two parts. How do a slide actually prepared? What do we do to produce that slide so you've got a specimen to look at? Now we need to think about the idea of histology. Histology is the study of cells. You'll see that term cropped up, cropping up in books. What is the histology of something? Histology means studying using a microscope. Um, there's a slight difference between that and something called cytology, which is just the word is just used to study cells, whereas histology is studying cells using a microscope. Now, cells are colourless and often transparent, um, so therefore if we are making a section of them, we might need to stain them to make them visible. Uh, and that can be non-specific, staining everything the same way, using the one common stain which stains everything, or specific picking out certain chemical groups or different types of cells or different features of cells which we can stain with a particular stain. And we'll look at some examples of some stains a little bit later. Uh, you don't have to stain everything. Um, you can do a couple of techniques. Light interference microscopy um, can show you things sort of on a bright background. This is useful for living specimens. If you look at the example of an amoeba here, this is 40 times magnified. It almost looks like it's three dimensional. Um, and it's really useful for people who want to study living organisms, biologists working and uh, medical researchers working in laboratories. They might need to be able to study and work on real living organisms. And you can't do that with the traditional slide. Uh, however, it's quite expensive. Similarly, there's something called dark ground or dark field microscopy, a dark background with a light shining on it. Um, it's again, here's another amoeba or protozoa. And you can see again that uh, you can see the crystals sort of within it outlined with bright light. So this is shining a bright light onto something and looking at it. But neither of these are staining techniques. So they're good where for some, for some ideas where things are thin and transparent not necessarily for others. So other things we might need to look at using staining. How else do we prepare them? Well, fixing might need to be done. Fixing them to stop chemical reactions taking place. Or sometimes we do what we call cryofixation, freezing something so that it's stopping an organism from breaking down, decaying. Uh, it's stopping it in a snapshot so we can look at it at a particular moment in time. Obviously, that's uh, a, a, an organism that is dead. You then embed the specimen in some kind of plastic. If you've got something soft and squashy that, um, you know, like a little cell or a section of tissue, you need it to be firm so that you can carry out the next stage. And the next stage is section ink. And this is uh, producing thin slices. Now, this you can see the equipment they're using here is what we call a microtome. And it kind of winds round and round and round or that way round. And it produces very thin slices. Uh, so here's an example of some of the thin slices on the left. Uh, you've got a repeating thin slices of uh, uh, the cells there. Once you've got your little section, you may need to put it on a slide. Uh, it's often then sealed with a cover slip. We might need to stain it first, but that way where you then get your traditional slide that you might look at. And there are a number of different stains we can use. Uh, Acetic orsine stain or aceto orsine stains used to, uh, to look at chromosomes. Um, thinking about the chemical nature of different things, chromosomes might have particular chemicals contained within them. Yeah. Nucleic acids are acidic, so therefore uh, alkaline stains will bind to them quite well. So this will pick up a particular stain and stain it brightly. So you can see uh, here the actual particular chromosomes which are dividing. Eosin stain. Eosin is acidic. Again, it's negatively charged, so it will combine with basic or alkaline structures. And it, this is what gives this the pink sort of background stain. It's often and usually combined with another stain called hematoxylin. Um, this 
stains nuclei purple, so it's basic or alkaline, um, and it reacts with acids. So you've got the purple staining picking up the nuclei, and then the pink staining for the cytoplasm. So you can see that the cell has been made much more clear than it would be if it was transparent. Uh, and it, this is often described as H and E stain. You'll see you know, hematoxin, toxin, and eosin. Sudan red, another stain, stains uh, fats bright red. Uh, so here you can see fat cells. There's not a lot of structure in fat cells. They are just cells, but filled full of fat with a thin sort of membrane. That's how you can see these cells just packed full of fat and they're stained red. Adipose tissue is fat tissue. Iodine, you'll have done this or will be doing this. You've done it low down the school. You're going to be doing it with me again anyway, but you, uh, it's a traditional staining technique. Um, iodine combines to most plant cells. Weak iodine will make, make the starch grains visible. Uh, here you can see the sort of the basic outline of the cells. It just helps to make the cell a bit clearer. Um, things with lots of starch would go blue black. So here we've got potato cells or amyloplasts. Uh, and these are the uh, blue black sort of stained areas within the potato cells. Electron microscopes, really briefly, I think you need a, a, a thin idea of what um, is done to also to prepare for electron microscopes. You need a vacuum. Uh, air would get in the way of the beam of electrons, would deflect the electrons. So therefore, you need to remove the air out of the uh, electron microscope. You need to remove water from the specimen. If you've removed the air, you have a vacuum, water will then boil. So you need to get rid of any water, so the specimen needs to be completely dried out. Unsurprisingly, again, this is only applies, therefore, to dead, non-living specimens. You can't do this with something living. Uh, you then use heavy metal stains or um, a, a coating of metal on the outside so that you can get contrast or deflection from the outside of the uh, specimen. And here's an electron micrograph, a picture taken using an electron microscope. And it's a thin slice, and you can see here these sort of darkly stained bits. These are uh, ribosomes, and this sort of big section up here, that's a nucleus. So all of this sort of darkly stained matter is within a nucleus. So all of that there is part of a nucleus. But it's been stained with certain salts to show up, to make sure the sections, parts of the section do show up. Uh, scanning electron microscopy, um, you need, again, the outside surface coated with something so it reflects uh, the electron beam. Um, here's a scanning electron micrograph, uh, this time of a particular cilia within the hair cell. Um, that's a light microscope image of the same thing as if it's an electron microscope image. And you can see a uh, sort of much greater level of detail provided because it's got greater magnification and clearer resolution. And you can get clearer resolution because of the nature of the beam of electrons. Microscopy, what are some of the issues, some of the problems you might need to recognise? Plane of section, what do we mean by this? It's not talking about aeroplanes, we're talking about how it, something is sliced. So when you think about uh, planes of section or when, when you're looking at a thing, you, you're thinking about, you're looking at a slice taken through something that is three-dimensional. Yeah? So you're looking at a 2D picture of a 3D object. Uh, so there's a 3D image of a cell. But uh, it depends on where you were cut. You cut it as to what might you might see. Now, he, if we look at our animal cell here, if I slice it down the middle down down here, then you don't see anything that is hidden behind that. The nucleus and all the other things just don't appear in your section. So you don't get necessarily get an idea of all of the structures, depending on how you have sliced something. Yeah. Similarly, um, when you look at the structures within then they may have different appearances. Yeah, if you look at an orange one way to the other, it has a very different appearance. So if you slice something one way or another way, it'll have different appearances. So transverse sections are cutting through, uh, through that way. Longitudinal section lengthwise. Imagine a mitochondria, a bit like a baguette. Yeah? If you cut a baguette long ways, it'll be a long, thin piece. If you cut a baguette that way, then it'll be short round piece. Yeah? So how you slice it will make the images look different. You also get things called what we call artifact production. Um, 
the process of actually producing it can affect the appearance of it. So if you are drying it out, if you are embedding it in plastic, if you're then slicing it, you can affect and damage where, how things relate to each other. So they don't always look the same. The more you prepare it, the more likely you are to produce an artifact. So if you get electron microscopy, that's uh, difficult. And this is serious because it's, you know, we use microscopy and histology to look at specimens uh, in hospitals, for example. So if somebody is uh, having a breast cancer sm uh, sample taken or a cervical smear and the slide doesn't get prepared properly and then you think, oh, that looks like cancer when actually it isn't, then you're telling somebody something serious when actually it's not as serious as it might be, or vice versa. So here's a couple of examples of artifacts. Um, we've got the artifact here. This is a fold that's happened. There's something, some one piece is sat over the top of another. Um, or it could be a foreign body. It's, uh, so, you know, it's a, maybe a bit of hair or something like that that's got in there. Um, here, you've got a, a big lump of stain that's uh, looking like a structure, but actually isn't something you want to be looking at. Um, here, this, section here is all pulled away and torn now you might think oh this is space in the tissue it's not it's just a badly prepared slide so you get an artifact caused by poor preparation here's it folding uh you get folds here and here and here and here and here and here similarly there these are not actual structures that really you should be looking at it's just one bit looks overlaps the other yeah uh, here you've also got some shrinkage some of this is pulled away there's a space appeared in there which shouldn't really be there uh, and when you slice something these lines here and here all the way there and there it's the slicing from the microtome that has scratched the surface and produced artificial images as part of the artifactual preparation okay we're going to pause there uh, and we'll continue with the second uh, presentation to talk about how we might carry out uh, drawings, a bit quite a short presentation.